Welcome to another video. So let's do some linear algebra and solve this system of equations using matrices. Something I want to tell you right from the get-go is whenever the number of variables in any system of equation is more than the number of equations, you cannot get the answers, like the exact answers. What you will get will be something in terms of something else or there will be no solution. So, it is important for you to just know what to expect. In this case, we have x1, x2, x3, x4, but we only have two equations. It's impossible for you to know the exact values of x1, x2, x3, x4 if you're not given four linearly independent equations. Let's get into the video. So this is one of those cases where you're going to have what we call free variables because there will be something that you can make anything you want. For example, if I want you to solve this equation, x plus y is equal to 2, and that's all I give you. Do you think you can solve this? You can't. You need another equation that is linearly independent from this. Okay, so, but if this is all you get, then you can say, I'm going to assume that y is 1, then I know what x is, x is going to be 1. Or I'm going to assume that y is 7, then I know that this is going to be negative 5. So you can make this anything you want it to be, and you can make this in terms of this. So you can say x equals 2 minus y, so that this becomes a free variable that you can change, and this one takes its value on the basis of this. And that might be a similar situation here. So. Let's set this up and solve it. So what I'm going to do is write down the coefficients in a matrix form. So this would be minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1. And under it, I'm going to write minus 2. I'm going to write minus 2. I'm going to write 1. But there's nothing for x4 in the second one, so I'm going to write 0. I know that if I multiply this by all the variables x1, x2, x3, x4, I'm going to get 0 and minus 1. That's funny. Is this multiplication possible? Well, let's look at it. 2 by 4, we're multiplying it by a 4 by 1. 4 by 1. So, these two are the same. Multiplication is possible, and what comes out of it is a 2 by 1, which is what we have here. So this looks set to be solved. So what we're going to do is generate the augmented matrix. So so the augmented matrix is going to look like this. Minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1. And then we're going to have 0 and minus 1. And for the second one, it's going to be minus 2, minus 2, 1, and 0. So what we need to do is take this and make it into the reduced um, row echelon form or even the row echelon form. What do we do? I am going to, I don't like this minus 1 being here, so I'm going to multiply the first row by minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to say um, minus 1 times row 1. So what I get will be this. And it's going to be 1, 1. Then I have minus 1, minus 1. And this times minus 1 gives me 0. OK. The second row stays the same. It's going to be minus 2, minus 2. I have 1, 0. And this stays as minus 1. OK. So now remember, the mission is to generate a 0 here. OK, generate a zero here. If we generate zeros here, what do we get? I'm going to add two of this to this. So I'm going to say that row two is equal to, it's just going to be two of row one plus row two. So what do we have? We're keeping row one. So we have one, one, minus one, minus one. And then we need zero. And that's it. So what happens down here? If we add two of this to this, we get zero. If we add two of this to this, we get zero. So this is going to be zero, zero. Mm, interesting. 
If we add two of this to this, we get minus one. If we add two of this to this, we get minus two. And if we add two of this to this, we get minus one. That looks interesting. So at this point, we have already generated two zeros. We're down here. There's nothing else we can do because the way this is, okay, let me write this. Let's write this. Let's multiply this. Let's write it in. This is the row echelon form. Um, maybe I have to make a separate video just explaining all the requirements for you to say this is in row echelon form and the requirements for it to be in reduced row echelon form. That will be the next video. But let's just, we're done with this actually, because the way this is, there's no further simplification that we can do, okay? Because of this minus one that is here, I can actually multiply this row and then you have everything to be, no, it doesn't, that's it. So what does this mean? Let's multiply this by minus one. So we get rid of the minus, minus one, times row two. So what we have is gonna be this. It's gonna be one, one, minus one, minus one, and we have zero. And the second one is gonna be um, zero, zero. We have one, we've got two, and this is gonna be one. Okay, what does this mean? So let's start from the bottom row because it has fewer variables remaining. This was the column for x1. This is x2, this is x3, this is x4. So it looks like the second row had x3 and x4 surviving and the sum of both of them was one. So we can go into these conclusions and say that x3, see that? x3 plus x plus two times x4 was equal to one. So at this point, we're presented with an impossible situation because you have two unknowns, but one equation. And remember the analogy I gave at the beginning. If I told you X plus Y equals two, and I say solve it, you can't solve it because you don't know, you, you need one more equation. So you can do elimination or substitution or matrices or whatever. But with one equation and two unknowns, you have to assume a value for one of them. But if you're not allowed to assume values, all you just have to say is that, hey, I'm just gonna write x3 in terms of x4. So it's one minus two x4, and that's it. And then you say, okay, so what is x4? x4 can be anything, so we say x4 is free. Free like a bird. That's the free variable I talked about at the beginning. Now, the same thing, we are gonna go to the first um, row and go, Okay, we're gonna say that x1, so this is representing x1, this is representing x2, this represents x3, x4, and everything is gonna be equal to zero. We already said this guy is free, so let's not bother him. And we said x3 depends on x4, you can replace x3 with one minus two x4. So let's see what we get at the end of the day. We have x1 plus x2 minus, 1 minus 2x4 minus x4 equals 0. x1 plus x2 minus 1 plus 2x4 minus x4 equals 0. So this gives us x1 plus x2 minus 1 plus x4. So we have x1 plus x2 minus 1 plus x4 equals 0. Now we have three variables, one equation. That's still an impossible situation, but we already said this guy is free, and this is a constant, so that's fine. That means there must be another free guy because you can't have everybody together. Some people have to be free. Okay, so we have x1 will be equal to one minus x2 minus x4. Whenever you write one unknown in terms of other unknowns, those other unknowns must be free. So how many free guys do we have here? We've got x2 and x4. x3 is not free because it is bound 
by what X4 is. Whatever X4 is will determine what X3 is, and whatever X2 and X4 are will determine what X1 is. So we're done with our calculation, and then you can write your answer. We know that X1 can be written as a combination of 1 minus X2 minus X4. We know that X2 is free. Nice. I like to be free. And then X3 is a combination of 1 and 2X4. And we know that X4 is free. And this is it. Now this looks as if it's a very um, useless thing, but it is the most dangerous part of linear algebra because if you cannot find this, you cannot find the rank, you cannot find the um, nullity you can, uh, of any matrix, okay? It's important that you know how to do this calculation because it was the problem that I had until I overcame it, okay? You have to know what is free, what is not free, and how to write them. Please do that, okay? Especially if you're trying to find the eigenvectors you, you, of a matrix, you have to be able to do this. I'll see you in the next more difficult video. Never stop learning. Those who stopped learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.